Welcome to the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty, everybody. It's week 10, and the Warhawks are set to take on the Washington Huskies. It's the ninth game on the year for Kalispell, who now jumps up to number 8 after another big victory last week. The Warhawks have been playing some outstanding football lately, and today in the 101st game in team history, they are looking for their fifth win in a row. Over this winning streak, they've put up at least 38 points in each game. And it's this high-powered offense we're going to see up first as we get underway. At the goal line, here we go. Marty Belafonte on the return, right down the middle and drilled shy of the 20-yard line. Brandon Warren takes the field, coming off a 328-yard performance, two touchdowns on the day. He enters with 12 touchdown passes this season. Carl Joyce is the motion man as we get underway here with a pass. Warren floats it toward the boundary and that's hauled in. Carl Joyce for a gain of 26. The touch that Warren can put on these throws is something else. It makes this offense so hard to defend. Here's a fake to Kyle Thomas and now a dump off to the tailback as Thomas puts a move on a pair of defenders and that puts him in Husky territory with a gain of 14. This offense not wasting any time at all. Sweep left, Troy Lee on the carry, hit down after a short pickup. Lee starting to get a lot more carries, we saw that last week. He'll get the call again on second down, falling forward. Lee a very good creator out of the backfield at 6.7 yards per carry. First and 10 now, pressure on Warren and he's taken down. It's a loss of 10. Keep in mind this offensive line is not particularly strong and they're without starting center Andy Colbert who hurt his knee last week. Ryan Westergren is the starting center. He gets beat here on second and 20 as Warren gets away from the pressure, heaves the pass downfield and Hayden John Charles gets 18. Third and two here for the Warhawks. Good protection on this one, a quick throw short, John Charles there again, hauled in for a catch of 10 yards. Kalispell enters the red zone, four on the rush. A lot of trouble there, but Warren somehow keeps his balance, takes off toward the goal line, and he's in for the touchdown! Kalispell on the board with their opening possession. Warren's been running for a lot of touchdowns lately. Add that one to the list. Now it's time to see what this defense can do today. Washington has a very good quarterback in Paul Coley, who throws underneath to his receiver Jeff Davis for a gain of 12. Coley very accurate. Now first and 10, they'll hand it to Anton Davis, who puts the football on the ground, and Kalispell has taken over. Chris Harrison knocks it free from the 160 pound back. He's listed at 5'9", 167, and we have a very physical line, so we'll see how that matchup plays out. Warhawks take over, and Warren again in trouble. The pocket has not been safe for him so far. He's been sacked twice by Joe Brown. The Hawks go empty here on the edge of field goal range. Warren again chased outside, out of room now, heaves it, and the pass is taken back by the Huskies, picked off by Thomas. And they'll take over at their 24. Warren just taking a bad risk here. You can maybe try a long field goal, but he tries to float it up to Marty Belafonte, who really isn't in good position. Seven to nothing, Washington takes over. Coley floats it downfield ahead of the pressure, and that ball is hauled in by Walter Davis. Three Davises start on this offense, by the way. Here's Anton Davis, his first carry since the fumble, and he gets driven back after a six yard pickup. Split backs here for Coley. Looks like option and he ain't ready for it. That is Wesley Merrill on the quick hit. Third down and eight. Four receivers on the field for the Huskies. Coley pressured, gets it away and that's caught. Eric Beck for 31 yards. A pretty special throw there from Paul Coley and a great catch sets up the Huskies at the six yard line. Coley across the middle, and that is a touchdown. Huskies capitalize in a big way. Coley, five of six, passing Walter Davis with the touchdown. Brandon Warren up to eight interceptions on the season. That last one was very careless. And they'll start this drive with some option. The flip back to Thomas, and he's out across the 45 for a pickup of around 10. 
Lee checks into the game, a lot more rotation today. Warren keeping and perfectly defended. Stuart Bobo on the tackle for loss, three and out. Husky football now getting a good response after the interception. And this is Anton Davis ahead, not much there. That's Bozeman on the stop. Third down and seven for the Huskies. Coley protected across the middle. Hauled in, Walter Davis, shy of the marker. Another three and out. Kalispell with their two tight end look and two backs. Here's an interesting look. We saw this in preseason. They'll run more option. Thomas on the pitch and again eight yards. This offense is so hard to defend. They have so many choices with what they can do. Second down and two, a short throw. Hauled in, Troy Lee. The backs are all very good at making defenders miss, and they're effective in the pass game. New set of downs, off the fake, underneath. John Charles there again, up to the 40-yard line, pickup of nine. Just continuing to keep this defense guessing. Hard to be right. Second and one, Thomas carries, and he'll move the chains. And he's down. Kyle Thomas in some pain here. Head coach Leon Daniels and the trainers out to check on him. Hopefully he can return. Troy Lee checks into the game for now. It's second down. Heavy rush on the way. Check down Lee on the catch. Lee makes a move. Finds some extra space. He's inside the 20. That's what makes Troy Lee so effective. New set of downs, and McKinley checks into the game. The senior running back who finishes with some real strength for a gain of seven. McKinley the back here next to Warren. Warren on the keeper. Takes it in for a touchdown again. Number two on the day. Option down in the red zone can be so effective. Warren caps off another drive. And the Kalispell Warhawks have retaken the lead. 14-7. Huskies take over. Kalispell has two safeties sitting back deep here respecting Coley's arm. He'll throw it to the sideline, and that's hauled in by Ira Armstrong for a gain of 12. Coley very accurate thus far with his passes. He'll hand it now, and Davis is met in the backfield by Alex Hardy. They're keeping Washington pretty one-dimensional for the most part, but that one dimension, pretty effective. Coley out for Davis. That's hauled in. Another good catch, gain of 12. You just got to get some pressure on Coley one way or another. Davis carries here, gets into the second level, and you see not much contact there, and he goes down. Third and four, now they'll send a rush. Picked up, though, and Coley finds Beck over the middle. Good throw into a tight window. Washington very efficient in the air. Back in the red zone, Coley floats it outside. That is hauled in. Davis at the four. Kalispell's got to figure out what they're going to do to stop this passing game. Second and goal, Davis slips through contact and he breaks the plane. Big touchdown for the Huskies as they retie this game. A good one so far in the first half as halftime is right around the corner. Here is Warren on a quick pass, hauled in by Carl Joyce who eclipses 500 receiving yards on the season. New set of downs, Lee still in the game at tailback. Warren flushed outside, nowhere to go, and he'll take off for a gain of five. At least next year, Kalispell does have the number one tackle already committed. Here's Warren on second down, across the middle, Hayden John Charles. They catch the Huskies in cover two and put the safety in a no-win situation. New set of downs, sweeping left, Lee met and makes sure to get a few extra nine more yards. Down to a minute 26 here in the half. Sweep right this time, and Lee is hit in the backfield and stopped for a big loss, setting up third down. Thomas Roberts slot right. He's the lone tight end, third and four. Outside, Warren connects, and Payne gets into the end zone. They gave him way too much of a cushion, and Payne is able to work himself in for six. Kalispell back in front. Really good play there by Kalispell. The timing was excellent. Time for only one more play for Washington. Halftime about to hit. Paul Coley going to throw it as far as he can. And it's an impressive distance, but it's intercepted. Jamari Akinjide. Now he's going to try to do something here, but he's getting cut from behind, and he's taken down. And on to halftime we go. Pretty good half of Warhawk football there. The offense looks like business as usual, but the defense, they've definitely been challenged today by Paul Coley.
Warhawks trying to get their fifth win on the season. And if they can play some better defense in this half, they'll have a good shot at getting it. It's defense up first. Paul Coley under center. Washington in the bunch. Needing six here. Coley across the middle. Nice spinning catch made by Davis. They're giving Coley a great pocket consistently, and he's not missing any throws. First and ten, another one outside. Davis, very busy in this game. This one goes to Jeff Davis. Second down and seven now as they stack the box. Coley underneath. Davis is there, and he hangs on despite a huge hit from Wesley Merrill. Third and short, and they'll sweep it now to the receiver, Ira Armstrong. Gain of seven. Nice call there on third down. Coley right back to the air. Pressured now. Hit by one and taken to the ground. That is Xavier Bozeman. It makes this a tougher third down. Washington four of five on third. Coley pressured again. Heads outside. Davis makes the catch, and he is not going to get there. Good tackling by Kalispell, and they'll have to kick. A Husky field goal makes this a four-point game as Belafonte handles another return. Down the middle, heads outside through a lane. Belafonte across the 50, and there he goes! Marty Belafonte with the immediate answer! Kalispell extends their lead now at two-score contest after the 96-yard touchdown. I did not expect Belafonte to be as big of a big play threat as he is. Like I mentioned last week, I can't wait to see him get a larger role on offense. Huskies take over now as this defense has to be a bit tired, but Hardy makes a nice stop on Antone Davis. Third down and five, a three-man front. Coley setting up the screen. Ricks on the reception. Nice hit. Down he goes. That's Akin Jide. Three and out. Warhawks first drive now getting underway in the third quarter. Warren setting up a screen dumped off here for Troy Lee. Able to get past the first man and picks up four. Kyle Thomas is out for the rest of this game, so Lee getting a lot more snaps. Third and four. Downfield, that's intercepted. Long comes away with it. Warren second on the day. They were not on the same page here at all. Cliff Long jumps the route. And that throw was definitely telegraphed. Huskies trying to capitalize off another Warren mistake. Coley to the air, finds Edwards this time. He'll get past Hardy, and that will move the chains. 2.15 to go in this third quarter. Offset backfield, Coley underneath again. Incomplete, Akinjide makes the play. So he has an interception, that breakup, and a big tackle on the last drive. Across the middle on second down, Beck makes the reception. Another pinpoint pass from Coley. Just outside the red zone now, no one in the deep middle for Kalispell. They bring some pressure and Coley finds Armstrong behind the linebackers. That makes it goal to go Washington. Bunch formation on second down, Coley from the pocket gets the open look, Ira Armstrong. Kalispell still not sure of how to cover these receivers and disrupt the passing game as the Huskies make it a one-score game again. Warren can't really afford any more mistakes with how well the Husky offense has played. This is a screen pass. McKinley gets to the outside. So now Terrence McKinley getting a few more opportunities. He has very good hands and he runs with power. Seven seconds to go in the third quarter. Here's Warren. From the pocket, airing it out to the sideline. It's a catch! Mike Harris, 38 yards. Another very good throw from Brandon Warren, but it was very risky given the situation in this game. Start of the fourth quarter, give up the middle. Lee finds some daylight. He's out to the 10-yard line. First down, Warhawks. Motion now with Justin Payne. He'll go all the way across. It's a screen for him, and Payne doesn't get very much. Maybe two yards. Third down, Kalispell. Empty backfield here for Warren. Two tight ends on the field. Warren protected, and the pass knocked down in the end zone by Matt Thomas. Fourth down. The Huskies keep staying in this game. They're only down by seven. Big drive here for Washington. Coley has to check it down as Harrison was flying off the edge. Loss of one. Gotta get this stop. Third and 11. 
Kalispell brings the pressure, and Coley's going down! He's sacked by Xavier Bozeman. What a game he's put together. Two sacks, four total tackles for a loss. Bozeman really coming into his own and stepping up in a very big spot. 31-24, Warhawks take over. And we're going to see some option to start this possession. And Warren's going to keep it, absorbing the contact. It took away the pitch option. Now they bring Justin Payne. It's more triple option. Pitch out Justin Payne. Will not get the first down marker. So Washington forces the big third and two. Two tight ends here for Kalispell. Warren to pass. Pressured and gets it away. Big time catch made by Carl Joyce. One of the toughest plays the Warhawks have made today. Now in Husky territory, another fake. Warren getting outside the pocket and complete to Thomas Roberts. So they're making sure Warren is basically moving on every play so far this drive. Now they'll do play action and Warren floats this out. McKinley hauls it in and he'll move the chains again for Kalispell. They're now in field goal range and they can continue running clock. Sweep right, Lee, nowhere to go, bottled up on the play. Kalispell just three of seven on third down, they need nine. And they'll run it, Lee to the outside, picking up blocks along the way, turns it up and he's got the touchdown! 26 yards for Troy Lee. They were content just safely running and keeping the clock moving, they end up with another score. Now for an update, Kalispell's next opponent, Oregon State, just suffered their second loss of the year in a big way to Cal. That lead touchdown puts Washington down by 14 points and now unleashing the pass rush. That is Chris Harrison. He now has 10 sacks on the year. Second down and 19. There's an open look over the middle. Eric Beck with the reception for 26. Kalispell in press coverage this time. Coley across the middle again. Complete. Bozeman that time in coverage. Jeff Davis makes the catch. Tommy Jordan, one of the deep safeties here on third down. Coley once again hooks up over the middle. Larry Ingle makes this reception. So it hasn't been a bad day for Coley whatsoever. They just don't have a very complete roster right now. On the screen pass now, it's a good pickup on the catch and run for Antone Davis. A minute 29 to play. Again, safety sitting back deep for Kalispell. Coley outside the pocket, now back to the end zone, and nearly a score for Armstrong. Goal to go. Kalispell loading up the box. Coley to pass against the rush, and he's got Edwards for a touchdown. Outstanding day for Paul Coley as Washington now needs to recover the onside kick. 38-31, and here we go. This is scooped up on a couple hops by Justin Payne and Kalispell will try to end this game. First down and 10 with two tight ends. Warren starts by keeping, out to his left, sliding down, gain of five. Washington has all the timeouts they need here. Second down, sweep right, it's Lee heading outside, and he gets tripped up after a short gain. Third and two, game on the line right here. Two backs in the game next to Warren, and he's gonna throw it. He's under pressure, and floats it for Lee. Troy Lee out of bounds, he's got the first down, and that's going to do it here in week 10. Kalispell hangs on and wins their fifth game in a row. Another good showing for the offense. The defense, meanwhile, really didn't have a very good game outside of a few splash plays, but the Warhawks get the win nonetheless. Brandon Warren accounts for three touchdowns, but two turnovers. Overall, not their best win along this winning streak, but it adds another one to the list. Kalispell now 7-2 with three games to go this season, and a big one next week against Oregon State. Obviously, the turnover plays were not very good. Just took a chance for Marty Belafonte on that one. And then the one that was intercepted intended for, I think, Mike Harris. I just was wrong about when I thought he was going to cut. I was trying to time it up perfectly. I thought he cut under the safety and he was about three to five yards away from that being his move. So thankfully it didn't cost us there. But overall, I thought that our offense was pretty smooth outside of those turnovers. And we got good play again out of Troy Lee. He does not go down on first contact very often. 
And then defensively, just really impressed by the versatility of Xavier Bozeman, one of those players who has sat for a while, and now he's getting the chance to show what he can do. We'll talk a little bit of recruiting today, not a ton to get into, we don't have any new commits, but Vince Donaldson did end up committing to Penn State, which I had expected and took all the points away from him. Actually, I think we got locked out of that one a while ago, but a good defensive tackle going to Penn State. We added a punter to the board this week, Evan Temple. Just trying to stay prepared for the future and not waiting until we have to get a freshman in there. So Temple, good prospect, has good fake potential of 70 speed, so we're going to try to get him signed on. Lots of tough battles here up the board, very tough to predict them. And there are a lot of players I probably got to take points out of before our next game. Daniel Foster, probably one of those. Trying to keep this one close, but it just doesn't seem like it's going to work out for us in the end. We lost a bunch of ground this week with his visit to NC State. And he's got Florida next week. Probably bad news for us. Outside of Foster, there is James Huggins. This one's still pretty tight. Worried we're going to fall out of this battle as well. Huggins would be a great addition for our defense, but... I'm not sure we're going to be able to even have the late season visit with him because he might have already made up his mind. We're in good shape though for prospects such as Michael Hurst. This battle's still pretty tight. And then Mike Butler, that one's almost a done deal. Terry Ingram, same thing. And then I think that we're still going to have some good additions along the way. So on to week 11 next episode. We're set to take on the Oregon State Beavers. Two teams with just one loss in conference. Looking at just their rankings for rush offense, rush defense, and everything, they don't have a glaring weakness on paper. They score at a very similar rate as us. So it could be a really good game here against the Beavers, who just lost to Cal and snapped their winning streak. The Beavers have a very good quarterback, Daniel Glover, a pocket passer. Hopefully we can do a lot more to disrupt him than we did against Coley today. I was really impressed with how Coley played, and I don't want to see other quarterbacks do the same thing against us. Outside of Glover, very good safety in Tariq Hutchinson. Thankfully, they do not have the most stout defensive lines, so that's not going to be a big issue for us. Didn't want to see Ryan Westergren struggle against like a top-tier nose tackle or anything, so we're pretty okay there. Kyle Thomas is good to go, by the way. It was just a end-of-game injury for him. He'll be back in healthy, and I think Colbert will be back in one more week or so. Overall, I don't think there is much more I wanted to talk about today. I think that about covers everything. Just pretty happy with this season and how we're playing overall as a team. We have Harrison now with 10 sacks on the year. That's great. Hoping that Triplett joins him maybe as early as next week. And we'll see if Kalispell can keep the win streak going. Thank you all for watching. Please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave any feedback you have, any questions about the team. And I will see you again with more Kalispell Dynasty, of course, on Saturday. Just trying to make that a habit. Have a great day, everybody.